In the year 1919 in Eastern Europe, a Jewish man named Herschel is trying his best to survive while working as a ditch digger. The job doesn't pay very well, and the little money he gets must be spent on buying new shovels because they break often. Herschel thinks his life sucks until he meets Sarah while she's complaining about the price of fish in the market. He tries to talk to her, but she leaves very annoyed. However Herschel doesn't give up and works hard until he saves enough money to buy her some good fish. As soon as Sarah has her first bite, she accepts to hang out with Herschel. The two of them begin spending time together and discover they have a lot in common, like the fact that both their parents were murdered by Russian Cossacks. They often visit Sarah's favorite spot in the woods, and she confesses that her greatest wish is to be able to afford their own gravestone one day. In return Herschel says he dreams of trying seltzer water. A few months later, they finally get married, but unfortunately their plans for a new life get ruined when the Russian Cossacks attack the village. There is no chance to have a future in their village after the area is absolutely destroyed, so Herschel and Sarah move to the USA. Herschel thinks the Americans are nice and treat them better than the Russians, not understanding yet that people refer to him using anti-Semitic terms. Soon he gets a job at a pickle factory, where he earns a nickel for every 10 rats he kills. Months pass and by working very hard hunting rats, Herschel manages to buy two graves so the couple can be together even after death. Shortly afterward, Sarah gets pregnant, and Herschel promises their child will be strong and successful. One day while chasing after some sneaky rats, Herschel finds himself surrounded and accidentally slips, falling into a huge vat of pickles. To make matters worse, at that moment they announce the factory is being closed because of sanitary reasons. All vats are covered, and Herschel is left stuck inside. A hundred years pass, it's now 2019 and the factory building has been abandoned since the closure. One day, two teenagers are fooling around in the area with a drone that accidentally ends up going into the factory, knocking out the vat's lid. The teens go inside to look for it and when they finish moving the lid, suddenly Herschel sits up, looking alive and well. Moments later, the whole city is talking about Herschel. In a press conference, scientists explain why Herschel is perfectly conserved, and everyone accepts it as logical. Afterward Herschel is taken to the hospital for a checkup and is found to be in perfectly good condition, but when he hears that Sarah is dead, he refuses to believe it and gets violent, so they must tie him to the stretcher. After a thorough background check is done, Herschel is informed that he has one descendant left that lives in Brooklyn and has accepted to come pick him up. Moments later, Herschel meets his great-grandson Ben, who looks pretty much identical to him. The men share a hug when they realize they finally have a relative again. Then Herschel comes out of the building and gets to actually look at the city for the first time, finding himself in odd shock at how much the world has changed. When Ben stops a taxi, Herschel at first gets startled and thinks he must fight, but Ben quickly guides him to get into the car. Once they reach Ben's apartment, Herschel is even more shocked. Ben is just middle class, but Herschel thinks his great-grandson lives in luxury, especially when he hears he owns 25 pairs of socks. Ben invites him to stay for as long as he needs and offers Herschel something to drink, shocking him once again when he offers seltzer water. There's a machine in the kitchen to make it from scratch, and Ben guides Herschel to press the button, which excites the old man. Then he gets to taste it for the first time ever, which leaves Herschel very happy. Next Ben makes Alexa play an old song, and after some hesitation, Herschel joins the goofy dance just to have some fun. Afterward, they spend the afternoon out in the city, trying out all kinds of food and technologies. Herschel is confused for a hipster and is shocked to see interracial couples around. When they return to the apartment, Herschel asks Ben what he does for work, assuming that he's something important like a doctor or a lawyer. However Ben is actually a freelance app developer, and he grabs his tablet to show Herschel how his invention works. For the past five years, Ben has been working on an app called BoopBop, which is a service that checks companies' ethics when buying their products. Ben hasn't sent it to any potential investors yet because it isn't ready and he's still going crazy over some details, like the colors of the logo. Suddenly Herschel asks Ben if the man on the David Bowie poster is his dad, and when Ben says no, Herschel wonders why he sees no pictures of the family anywhere. Ben takes out an old family photo album which gets Herschel very emotional. After seeing Sarah's picture, he discovers she had a son, then he finds the modern pictures and asks Ben about his parents. Ben gets uncomfortable and explains that they passed away in an accident, so Herschel says they should go to the cemetery to pray for their souls. Ben gets uncomfortable again, explaining he isn't a religious guy, which disappoints Herschel. Feeling bad for the old man, the next day Ben takes Herschel to see the family graves, but Herschel is devastated to discover that the cemetery is in shambles. He can't help crying at the sight of Sarah's abandoned tombstone and begins praying for her, asking Ben to join him. However Ben prefers to look at his phone. At that moment, some workers show up to put up a billboard of Russian vodka right on top of the graves. Seeing the word vodka makes Herschel think that the Cossacks that destroyed his home are doing this, which makes him furious as he confronts the workers to ask them to stop. Obviously the workers ignore him, which makes Herschel even angrier and he ends up attacking the men. He knocks up the first few guys pretty quickly, but soon he's surrounded, and when Ben tries to stop them he gets beaten up too. This incident ends up with the duo being arrested and Ben has to spend a large sum of money to bail them out. 
When they return to the apartment, Herschel insists he wants to take the billboard down, and Ben reminds him that would cost money he doesn't have. An argument ensues, and Herschel implies Ben is a coward that is delaying the presentation of his app by making up excuses. Offended, Ben sends a few emails, and he's shocked to find a possible investor asking for a meeting. Later that day, Ben goes to see the investors, but he's turned down. They like Ben's invention, however Ben's criminal report is all over the internet and he makes for a bad face to represent an app based on the ethics behind businessmen. When he returns home, Ben blames Herschel for making his life go downhill. Herschel doesn't understand Ben's ideas and claims that they should start a pickle business instead, making Ben so furious that he says that Sarah would be ashamed of Herschel right now. He also points out it's easy for Herschel to talk but he can't do anything in this modern world without Ben. Hurt by all these accusations, Herschel swears to build a pickle empire without any help and make his dead relatives proud by cutting down the billboard. Before leaving, Herschel tells Ben he's a disgrace to the family name. Afterward, Herschel goes to the grocery store to buy cucumbers, but they are too expensive. While wandering around trying to think of something, he notices that the bin outside of the store has packed cucumbers in it. He immediately grabs them and gets an idea, he begins searching all the dumpsters around the city, gathering jars, salt, and random pieces to make his very own cart. He puts the cucumbers in the jars and lets the rain fill them up, finally creating pickles. Sometime later, Herschel puts up a pickle stand by the side of the road. Two guys are immediately attracted to his product because it's all local, natural, and very cheap, they're also very amused by Herschel's quirky mannerisms like the fact he wants the customers to bring the jars back. He does this to save money, but they think he's environment friendly and they decide to make a video for social media. Soon Herschel's pickle cart goes viral, and he appears all over the news and social media as people from all over Brooklyn come to buy his product. Ben sees the news about Herschel's success and gets incredibly jealous, especially because he's been struggling to come up with good ideas for his new app. This jealousy makes him so bitter that when he hears Herschel explain how he made the pickles in one of the many videos customers took of him, Ben calls the health department and files a complaint, mentioning that Herschel is using products from the trash. Moments later, the health department shows up at the pickle cart to shut it down, and Herschel has to pay $12,000. Herschel doesn't know how to continue, so his first two customers advise him to hire in turn since he wouldn't have to pay them. Herschel compares this to slavery, but he still likes the idea. For the interviews, he calls the interns to the park where he's living and they try to talk about their experience and their skills, but Herschel concentrates on checking they're strong enough to work. Once he's chosen a few lucky interns, Herschel teaches them everything he knows about pickles, and with their help they develop proper ethical methods that get them approved by the health department. The interns also help him sell the pickle on a larger scale, making the business quickly go back up. Shortly afterward, Herschel earns enough money to purchase the billboard and takes it down, he also makes his employees clean the graveyard. In the meantime, Ben bitterly notices that Herschel is getting successful again and that the investors that turned him down are now interested in investing in the pickle business. He also watches old videos of his graduation, showing how his parents gave him money to start his business because they believed in him, yet this only makes his mood worse. At that moment Herschel shows up at Ben's apartment to present proof of his victory and says he still wants to help Ben because at the end of the day they still are family. When Ben turns him down, Herschel comments he's more stupid than the Polish, who are already pretty stupid. Ben realizes Herschel has many old bigoted ideas and dares him to create his own Twitter account. Later in the evening, with an intern's help, Herschel tweets controversial statements about women, religion, and the queer community. The next day, angry people surround the pickle shop, protesting against Herschel's ideas and urging everyone to boycott his pickle business. Even his interns quit the job and join the protesters. Even after that, Herschel stays firm in his opinions, and soon he gets lots of support from conservative groups who see him as an icon of free speech and empowerment. Thanks to them Herschel continues to be successful and he even appears in far-right TV shows that see him as a hero. Ben sees this and his resentment grows. One day, Herschel gets selected to appear for a debate with a college professor on the subject of ethics. He makes lots of horrible statements about women, yet the public thinks he's brave and wants him to run for office. But then from the audience, a disguised Ben asks him about his thoughts on Christianity, and Herschel proceeds to say that the Virgin Mary invented Christianity to hide she did the dirty and calls everyone who believes in Jesus an idiot. This comment causes Herschel's admirers to turn against him and they begin chasing him down the streets of New York, so Herschel has to hide in an alleyway to save his life. Later in the evening, Herschel sees a news report about protests happening all across America to boycott him for good, and to make matters worse, authorities have dug up his past to deport him back to Eastern Europe. Since the paperwork for Herschel's arrival can't be found, the authorities have an excuse to revoke his citizenship. Herschel is declared an illegal fugitive, and the people are asked to report the police if they see him. With no way out, Herschel goes to see Ben for help by breaking into his apartment. He doesn't want to go back to Europe, so he'll be happy to go to Canada and start a business there. At first Ben says no, but he changes his mind when Herschel promises to never contact him again after this favor. The duo drives to the Canadian borders, and now they must walk through the woods to illegally enter the country. 
On their way, Ben accidentally cuts his palm, and Herschel tears a piece of his clothes to bandage the wound. At night, Herschel hugs Ben to keep him warm, and Ben realizes he's enjoying the time he's spending with Herschel now that doesn't have to worry about business. The next morning, they finally reach the border but have to hide when they are almost seen by border patrol. While waiting for the guards to leave, Ben feels bad for Herschel and confesses that he was the one who boycotted Herschel's business multiple times. He hopes that Herschel will forgive him, but instead he is punched in the face. As Ben falls unconscious, the commotion attracts the attention of the officers, so Herschel runs away with Ben's bag. When he finds a razor and clothes inside, he gets an idea, he shaves his beard, changes his outfit, and then crosses the border using Ben's ID. Meanwhile the officers arrest Ben thinking he is Herschel. Afterward Ben is put on trial, but his case is considered a joke when the lawyer tries to claim that he isn't Herschel, saying the lack of beard is proof. Ben is sent to Eastern Europe, where he ends up cold and alone in a town filled with strangers who don't speak English. Eventually he finds a guy that understands enough to point at a synagogue, and while Ben isn't amused, he has no choice but to stay the night there. Meanwhile Herschel feels awful because he has no family left. He goes to Ben's apartment and looks through the family photo album, from which a piece of paper falls. Herschel opens it to discover a drawing that Ben made of his parents as a kid, calling them Boop and Bop. It is then that Herschel realizes that Ben had always wanted to honor his parents. Back in the synagogue, Ben is asked by the men to join them for prayer because they're missing one for the traditional ritual. Ben accepts out of obligation, only to get emotional when he hears prayers that pay respect to dead family members. Suddenly Herschel appears in front of Ben and apologizes for his actions, saying that Ben is exactly what he wanted his descendants to be and that his parents must be proud of him. Ben apologizes as well and after they reconcile, they go to visit Sarah's favorite spot, which isn't as pretty as it used to be. They agree their next business must be done together as a family, Herschel will be pickling more than just cucumbers while Ben does the online marketing so they can sell worldwide. Sometime later, the duo returns to Brooklyn and pays a visit to Sarah's grave. This time, Ben prays along with Herschel. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.